Hi, welcome to Custodian360. Uh, today I'm going to run through how a particularly nasty little piece of ransomware called Satana or the devil or Satan um, executes on machines, how it behaves, uh, how it evades some traditional AV, so Windows Defender and malware bytes today, um, and a vast we're going to use. And then how we deal with it at Custodian 360, how our underpinning technology from Sentinel-1 uh, identifies and deals with that problem, uh, and then how, how we would feed that back into our um, end users. So Satana is um, very much like the Petya and Misha bundle, works in two modes. The first mode, um, it acts like a dropper, it writes to the beginning of infected disk, um, a low-level a module which is a bootloader with a kind of tiny custom kernel um, and the second behaves more like a typical ransomware so so let's get running um, we've got here uh, a Windows Defender machine um, I've got three VMs set up for us to, to have a look at this uh, across all three um, so Windows Defender is installed and running and all looking well good and we execute our ransomware so uh, Satana is executed, you get the user command prompt that comes up uh, or user access prompt that comes up and you click yes. Much like you know, if uh, the end user is downloading some software or opens an attachment, um, very, very straightforward. Uh, if you weren't looking for this, you just wouldn't know it was there. Um, so let's just uh, click on here again. So you can see on the desktop we've got the Satana document. Um, <clears throat> it loads itself on. Um, we're running a little bit slow, probably allocate a bit more memory um, and get this speed up a little bit. There we go. Let's just have a little refresh. There's, there he is again. So just click on there, and this is the ransom note effectively. So, um, bad luck you, um, God willing, all that kind of stuff, uh, and pay the ransom in a couple of days, you'll get the software to be able to unencrypt your uh, data. Not so great. Um, Windows Defender is still saying it's all good. Uh, if I go into the pictures, they're not available, none of them are there, or, or none of them are accessible. You see um, briefly uh, they all had the same um, email address, they were all... Uh, encrypted and the email is the same across all of them they all use the same code to be decrypted um, the input is the same as the output in this case um, so let's just have a quick flick through some process we know it's run through we know it's encrypting files um, is it easy to spot here's the thing um, the answer is no uh, so that's not there. Let's swip, switch over to the malware bytes machine. Um, exactly the same. It's exactly the same machine. They're identical builds. Um, we're just running the malware bytes premium trial. Again, when we execute, we get the uh, access uh, box pops up. Let's have a look here. Important with, with malware bytes, we get the great big green tick, which is what we're all striving for ultimately, I guess. Um, probably in this case, it's given us a full sense of security. So let's just have a look at the photos in um, the pictures library um, and we've got the ransomware note there and yeah, lo, lo and behold it's come through uh, and again the standardised email address um, and encryption on the uh, naming of the file so when we open them we can't get into anything. Not great. Um, and exactly the same note. Right, so um, we've got to a point where we've got uh, Windows Defender and Malwarebytes, two incredibly popular, um, very uh, commercially viable, let's say, quite cheap um, solutions for end users to buy, especially if you're in, in a small business. Um, as I'm flicking through here, uh, looking at some of these um, folders, I, I'm just looking for uh, examples here of where um, if we if we dive down you'll be able to see that the um, Satana uh, ransomware leaves itself all over the place 
essentially I'm showing you here that we've you know we've spawned off multiple processes um, and changes and file changes etc but key here is that, that Malwarebytes and Windows Defender even though we've got a second pop-up box are telling us everything's okay so let's just swap over to my Custodian 360 machine so we're running um, a vast on here we're running um, the Sentinel one agent which is um, underpinning our custodian uh, solution um, and immediately as we execute that file we get threat detected so straight away we know there's something wrong there um, that would be identified by the team back here in the office um, the guys and the analysts in the, on the help desk would get that immediately um, let's just have a look in and see what actually happened um, normally we, we would expect uh, ransomware like this you know, effectively zero day ransomware to be picked up in sort of two to four CPU cycles so the amount of changes that happen are you know very very small so there's much less in the way of process going on can we see no Satana's not in there so that's good um, so we haven't got it hasn't got that far the pictures are still there obviously so it hasn't got as far as encrypting those let's just jump into the dashboard so that's the test machine for the custodian 360 um, and we've killed and quarantined that's the policy we've got set at the moment um, if we have a look in the analysis page there we are killing quarantine so we've got a bit of information there at the top let's just have a quick look at endpoint connections so immediately this is dialed out to two locations in canada let's have a look at the attack overview six processes um, two file changes, two network connections as we said to Canada and a registry change and um, there's one persistency there so that, that's important for us to see um, and there's some really useful information for, that, for us there on the back to make sure that we can see what's going on on, on the customer's endpoint um, there's the uh, registry change as well no cloud data from the public cloud to um, give us any kind of extra information around the threat itself. If we have a look here, um, we've got some file changes. Um, there's the registry change, um, and there's some processes. So we've allocated memory to another process. We've written to other processes. Change permissions. Um, so you know, it's this is um, nasty ransomware. It, it, this is uh, not going away. You can't do a roll a rollback um, as you would. You know, you can't turn it back yourself. It will be there. Um, that's why I mentioned the uh, tiny kernel I was introducing. Um, <clears throat> look at um, part three of the process. It's executed its own image, um, but there's nothing there. So we stopped it at that point. It's already stopped. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can hit remediate uh, and send that command down to uh, the endpoint. Um, and that will unpick all the changes. Um, there aren't actually that many. Uh, if you'd let that run through um, without stopping it, um, we would see uh, hundreds of connections, hundreds of changes, thousands of changes actually, uh, and, and thousands of um, files, ish, file issues. So anyway, let's jump into analysis again. Um, quick look at the attack storyline and let's pick out some um, bits of detail and let's go back and have a look at them and this is the kind of checking that the team do on the help desk um, they would see the kill and quarantine our SLA is an hour for this kind of thing to to get um, to a full remediation um, they would just Drag that over there, but there we go. So let's have a look and see if I can find these um, these file changes. Just drop into here, and let's go up data. Um, so the guys, like I said, the guys would be doing this um, without meaning to labour the point. Uh, we would check some of these changes, make sure that they're uh, they've been undone and they're no longer there. Um, and, and then at that point we would be able to uh, mark this uh, particular threat as um, resolved um, or benign um, once we know that it's dealt with um, and that information then is shared across the network um, let's have a look at the registry changes as well change um, like I said we stopped it 
normally stops in two to four CPU cycles, so very, very quick. Um, and rather than thousands of changes and hundreds of reg key changes, um, we've got one, um, which is pretty spectacular uh, at the, in this, this day and age. Um, this is a, quite a nasty piece of ransomware. It's clever. It's, uh, I first saw this um, probably mid middle of 2016. We we started seeing variants of, of Satana um, and the similarities um, with the Misha and Petra bundle. Um, it was kind of uh, ransomware in development, if you like, but um, it's grown and it's now actually a, a really really effective um, piece of software. Piece of malware, probably can't call it software, can you? Um, so let's have a look here. Can we see that we use users? Uh, user 5. So I'm happy there's nothing there. Yeah. Okay, so we're good. Um, we can see that there's nothing in that, um, in that pane. <clears throat> and um, those changes that we've checked there would all appear to have been remediated successfully um, and the machine is back to its kind of pre-execution state, it's safe, the issue's been killed and quarantined and, and removed. So, and then you can see there it's got kill, quarantine and remediate underneath the uh, file name. So we can mark this as resolved, um, we'll just drop that down there and that will drop it out of our mitigated active threat pane uh, and we'll return back to normal. So that's a quick look at um, Satana. Uh, I, I, I will do a few more of these. Um, if you've got any more questions, please do reach out. You can get hold of me at kevinb at custodian360.com uh, or you, you're more than welcome to have a look at our website www.custodian360.com. Um, we've got lots of demo videos um, from myself and Andy, our technical director. Um, and lots of collateral for um, you to have a look at. Um, if you want to know any more about how the solution works and, and have a one-to-one -one deep dive, please do reach out, um, and I look forward to speaking to you.